Oh, come on. Oh yeah, there it is, there it is. No! Last hit, last hit. Yeah! Free ball! I'm free balling. Whew! That was intense. You guys see that? Of course you did. Thanks to our sponsor for today's video, Corsair. Corsair sent over all the gear we need to create and capture sick gameplay montages like that one. And like crazy thing, they have gone from just system memory to the point where you can build almost an entire gaming setup with nothing but Corsair parts. So why don't we give it a shot? At the heart of almost any sick gaming and streaming rig is an AMD Ryzen processor. And we went with the Ryzen 7 3700X, mostly because the Ryzen 5000 series isn't out yet. It's roughly $300, features eight cores and 16 threads, and at this price is pretty much the best bang for the buck when it comes to a multitasking CPU. In order to avoid an awkward situation where we do a build video and then two weeks later it's irrelevant, we chose the ASUS RG Crosshair 8. It runs an X570 chipset, allowing you to easily upgrade to the new Ryzen 5000 series CPUs once they land. It's also got solid VRMs if you're into overclocking. AMD has said that Ryzen 5000 should be an overclocking beast. 11 USB type A ports, onboard Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth, and yeah, it's expensive at $380, but it's about as feature rich as it gets. For system memory, naturally we've gone Corsair, and naturally we've gone for RGB lighting. This is their Vengeance RGB, and we've got a 32 gig kit here, clocked at 3333 megahertz CL16. At 150 bucks, this is a pretty darn good bang for the buck in terms of performance today, and probably not needing to upgrade for quite some time. What's a little dumb is having to remove this grill from the fan in order to get at the M.2 slot, but what's not dumb is going with, of course, our MP600 PCI Express Gen 4 SSD. It's rated for read speeds of almost five gigabytes per second, and at $180 for a very fast boot drive, it's pretty darn reasonable. It actually comes with a cooler, but as you can see, we stripped it off because our intention was to mount it under the spreader that's built into our motherboard, so. For our case, we've gone practical today here, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Corsair 275 Airflow, and they're really taking the Airflow thing seriously. Yes, they do have kind of like a stylistic front panel that really doesn't have a lot of gaps for airflow in it, but then, bam! Not only do they have these gaps in the side, they actually went and popped it off the rest of the case. So you've got almost unimpeded access to fresh airflow from the sides, at least in theory. We'll see how it goes. It's also got a tempered glass side panel, magnetic fan filter doodad up here, and of course, cable management up the wazoo with room behind the motherboard tray for most of your cables, and then a basement down in the bottom to cram all the ones that you couldn't figure out how to hide back there. Of course, managing our unnecessary cables won't be a problem with our modular Corsair RM750X power supply. Corsair was one of the first to jump into the modular power supply game and they've got it pretty much down to a science at this point. So we'll pop this into the bottom. This case has nice tall feet, so we're not gonna worry about having our fan down and it getting suffocated or anything like that. Screw it in from the back and go ahead and add our 24 pin connector, our eight pin connector for the CPU, our other more different eight pin connectors for the graphics card. And then we're also gonna need a SATA cable to power some of our other peripherals. Oh, what the deuce. Okay, got it figured out. It's just this motherboard. The plate that covers the fan here also covers the middle uh, screw hole. So I guess I'll start with some of the other ones first. It's uh, got a little nubbin that's holding it in place. This is a feature I really like of Corsair's cases. This was also a hilarious innovation the first time I saw it. A box for the accessories that's shaped like a hard drive with hard drive holes that comes in the hard drive tray. Neat. Our fan upgrade not exactly a practical one, but there's no doubt that Corsair's ML120 Pro RGB fans with their magnetic levitation bearings and of course, RGB lighting, both perform great and look fantastic. So we're going to hook them all up to a Commander Pro RGB and fan controller that I'm gonna just bury in the basement and not bother to cable manage because cable managing RGB stuff is a nightmare. 
Look at it all, two wires per fan. Even though some elements of this rig are more bang for the buck, our cooling configuration is gonna be freaking awesome with three intakes at the front and then three exhausts in the top and the back. Now these two, I can't put in yet because <clears throat> I need to mount them to my to my H100i RGB Pro XT liquid cooler first. Um, yeah, main features of this puppy, RGB lighting, and well, it's an AIO liquid cooler. Keep that CPU nice and cool. This is the key moment in radiator mounting when you either knock everything down or you get the whole thing lined up in one go. So I had mounted the fans with the long radiator screws Look a little something like that. Had them just stacked there. Now I'm gonna try and put them all the way through to the rad and get the whole thing secured. Did I get it? Oh, I got two. That's most of the battle. Nice. That's a quick AIO mount right there. Thermal paste is pre-applied and uh, <coughs> I cheated and used the uh, clip mount instead of the uh, one that takes longer. <laughs> so we're just gonna pop that on there. I mean, ah, realistically. What, what are we talking? Maybe one degree with the different mounting pressure? Two? Is this gonna have enough room for the GPU? Yeah, it should be fine, right? Oh God, this is really tight. Uh, okay, we're running our eight pin for the CPU power connector up here. And this is gonna be a real tight fit, ladies and gentlemen. There we go. That extra four pin next to it. We only really need that if we're getting into like extreme overclocking or something like that, and we won't be. We're also gonna plug in our 24 pin at this time after running it through the cable management grommet here, giving us a nice clean look. This is all fan and RGB connectors. That's why the Commander Pro comes in real handy. Okay, that's gonna go there. That hangs off there. And we plug all our fans into that. All right, which way do you guys wanna go? One, two, three, four, five, six, or wrong, 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 wrong. Perfect, we're not gonna do that. As much as fan and RGB wiring is annoying though, this really does make it quite a lot less painful having it all go to one place. So I'm just gonna tuck this down here and then tuck these over here and the cable management shouldn't look too bad. Front panel audio goes right here. I just love this pass through here. I hate it when cases don't have that. This is really annoying. This USB port doesn't quite line up with where it would need to be to go straight through the cable management hole. So we're stuck with kind of a bit of an awkward thing there. But what I'm kind of hoping is that when we bring the GPU cable through, it'll kind of hide that behind the GPU and the power cables. The connectors for the front power and buttons are an example of why I do like to have a cable management hole like kind of right here or right here. But you can see we can reuse the one that can be used for GPU cables as well if you want to bring them up from the bottom. So that, that works out pretty good. Actually, do you, should we bring the GPU cables up from the bottom? What do you think? This location versus this one? What do you want to see? The side, the side. You like the side? Okay. I like it because it can help with GPU sag a little bit if you bring it over top. That's the main reason. It's not for aesthetics. On that note, it's finally time to put the graphics card in. So we're going to pull out these two PCI covers. Wow, that's a strong magnet. Okay. <laughs> and ooh, we're moving those tubes over a little. Let's see here. Does that fit all right? Hey, they can stop making these runs between the two connectors so long because no one's going to run dual GPUs anymore. Is that good enough? Yeah. All right. Look. Okay, for a system with RGB all over, this is not bad. Just got to use the old trick. Came together pretty nicely, didn't it? Not bad. Still gotta fire it up and make sure everything works, but so far not bad. Now it's time for phase two of the build. <laughs> the peripherals. If you told me Corsair was gonna have everything but the CPU, GPU, and motherboard under their umbrella, like even all the peripherals, just like a few years ago, I'd have been like, really? Actually, yeah, they seem to be on the way towards world domination, that makes sense. That's probably what I would have said. <laughs> One of the big highlights today is, of course, the K100 RGB. It features Corsair's iconic all-aluminum construction and the new IQ wheel. So this thing's super cool. You can use it to like zoom or uh, scroll between alt tabs. And actually, it's got an SDK, so the potential is kind of limitless. That's pretty neat. 
It's got like a wraparound RGB lighting that we'll see in a moment here. 4,000 hertz polling rate, which is apparently thanks to using a USB 2 data path instead of USB 1.1. And this particular one is equipped with Cherry MX Speed switches, although there is a different version using Corsair's OPX switches that are optically triggered. It's got Corsair's traditional pretty solid build quality. That's looking real fine actually, but a price to match at over $200. But hey, it's got the cable management for your headset wire. Ooh, David, I missed the best part. Look at this wrist rest. It's so plushy. Also, does it mount magnetically? It does. Ooh, now I'm feeling fancy. I'm a fancy gamer. For our mouse, we're using a Dark Core RGB Pro. We actually managed to forget to grab a Corsair mouse pad, so I guess what we're gonna find out is how well it tracks on a random uh, vinyl sticker surface here. Ooh, IQ Nexus, their companion touchscreen. We were supposed to do a short circuit unboxing of this thing. I saw this and it looked super cool, but I never got around to it. So I guess we're gonna find out how it, uh, how it works here. This is officially Corsair's most hilarious product. They've dropped all pretense. This is the Corsair RGB, RGB stick. It just sits on your desk and is RGB. They don't, they're not even pretending that it is gonna have some other function, like being a mouse that's also RGB or a case that also has RGB. This is just RGB. Oh wait, no, wait. There's a headphone stand doohickey you can attach to it, but that's optional. There we go. How funny is it that they intentionally hung the headphones off the back so that it wouldn't get in the way of the RGB, even though that's like less ergonomic to grab them? I mean, I guess technically you could put it on any way you want. Okay, you could do this if you really wanted to. Ew. But then you're only getting 75% of the RGB that you paid for. <laughs> Clearly, this is the way. How many buttons do you need when you I don't know, but the Stream Deck XL has them. Uh, if you're not familiar with the Stream Deck lineup, every one of these is a screen. So you can put like your scene or images, or if you have like a soundboard or something, each one of these can have a unique function. We won't actually be using one of the key benefits of the Wave 3 microphone from Elgato because we're using a wireless headset. But if you plug directly into it, you can actually control both volume and mixing of volume and your own voice directly on the microphone itself, which is pretty cool. It comes with a little um, uh, mounting adapter if you have an arm, but we're just gonna throw it on the little standy stand here. And then that leaves only, ah, oh, one of their big new products, which is the Elgato Ring Light. It's Wi-Fi enabled, which means you can control it with an app on your phone, or I never do that. I usually just use um, the app on my computer, but then I guess if you're in game, yeah, it makes sense you might actually use your phone. Okay, I, I get it now. Uh, usually I'm streaming WAN show, so I don't use it for that. And then as a ring light, of course, one of the key benefits is that you get nice, even illumination around your face. Got a little camera mount right in the middle there, so you can mount your camera right in the middle. We can adjust the color temperature and the brightness, but uh, in software. So we're gonna go ahead and get the app installed when we boot up the system. Let's see if this thing actually fires up here. Whoop, hit switch. Now that everything is functionally working, I'm uh, adding some RGB accents. We've got our fans lit up, so that looks pretty sweet. Oh yeah. Now we'll find out, uh, David and I were talking about this off camera, how the RGB is gonna look through the front grill. I would say not bad. We're gonna have to get a B-roll shot of it or something, not in like bright light, cause it looks way cooler when it's not <laughs> under studio lighting. There are a couple configuration things that are a little weird right now. I couldn't get the ring light to sync wirelessly for whatever reason. My ones at home are like, just work instantly. So I'm not sure what the deal is with that. And then this is a funny one. The backlight definitely works on this, but when I load the profile for the H100 iRGB, it's like not backlit. It's like it's in a power saving mode or something. So it's working. See, check this out. That's extreme. And then I go ahead and click quiet. Give it a sec. There we go, it's ramping down. Everything else seems to be working pretty much normally though. So all that's left now is to actually fire up a game, I guess. All right, I may not have chosen the most intense game, but it's definitely in line with our RGB themes here. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Bing, 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 bing. Oh, I missed out. Have you, you've unironically played this game, right? Oh yeah, I love Peggle. Yeah, all right. Hey, I realize for some of you, this might not live up to the expectations you might've had for what we were gonna do with this epic Corsair gaming rig, but look, I don't judge. Whatever people wanna stream, 
can go ahead and stream. And Corsair, with their Elgato subsidiary in particular, has got all the gear that you need to do it. So you can check it all out at the link in the video description. Thanks again to Corsair for sponsoring this video and thanks to you guys for checking it out. If you enjoyed it, maybe check out, uh, what else? Yeah, check out the rest of our all whatever builds. We've done like four of them now.